Good evening and welcome to Guest Baptist Church, our night service. Uh, we, we have been blessed this morning uh, with uh, two awesome services. Uh, and Brother Caleb Blue will be preaching for us tonight. We're looking forward to hearing from him. And, uh, and Sister Becca Blue will be singing for us. So y'all just enjoy tonight's service. Thank you.
Well, it sure is good just to be able to be back behind the pulpit in just a little bit. If, you got your, uh, if you're sitting there and you got your Bibles with you, uh, if you would turn to Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. Now, I'm going to be preaching on this title, Walking or Waiting? Walking or Waiting? Matthew chapter 14, I'm going to read verses 24 to 33. The Bible says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it, bid thou be, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and, and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Verse number 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. Let's pray. Lord, I love you. God, for just a little bit, God, would you just hide me by the cross, God? Would you just preach me in a way that you've never preached before, God? Lord, I want to be used. So, God, Lord, I pray that you take this message, God, for each and every person that may listen to this, uh, this sermon, God, or this whole entire broadcast. God, Lord, I pray that you just use it, God. Lord, I pray that you help somebody. In your name I pray. Amen. Like I said, I'm going to uh, preach on this title, Walking or Waiting. Uh, one thing that we got to realize here is these disciples that have got on this ship, they just got done witnessing a miracle that Jesus had just done. They just got done feeding the 5,000, and then Jesus told them to go on the ship. I'm going to get right into the message. Uh, the first thing that we find in this passage of Scripture is we find confusion from the people. In verse number 26, And when the disciples saw him walking on the, on the sea, they were troubled, saying, "A spirit, and they cried out for fear. So we find confusion from the people. We find uh, we find out these disciples were confused about what was going on. They had no clue what was going on. All they knew was they're on a ship and the wind was boisterous, the rain's flying in, the, uh, uh, the ship's rocking back and forth. They had no idea what was going on. And, and even when Jesus came and Jesus said his eye, be of good cheer, they were still confused. And if you go and you keep reading, you find that uh, only Peter spoke up. Only Peter said, and Lord, if it bid thou, uh, let me come into the water. But even he was confused. E even Peter said, Lord, if... It bid that. If it be that, bid me come. Even, uh, uh, even Peter was confused about the scenario. Even Peter was confused uh, about what was going on. Uh, and what gets me, this is what, this is, uh, I guess what God gave me this point, is even though they just got done seeing what Jesus could do, even though they just, I mean, they just got done being with Jesus, and then Jesus is walking on the water, and they're saying, if, if it is even you, and that's sometimes how we get in life as Christians, man. Uh, we see, we know God saved us. We see God working in our life. We see how God, how God is blessing our family or blessing us here, blessing us there. And even then, we still find ourselves getting confused about what's going on around us. Uh, even when God says, hey, uh, I'll use myself. Hey, I want you to preach. And I, I begin to preach. And then maybe, uh, I remember one time, I remember whenever I, I'll tell you the story and I'll keep going. I remember after I accepted the call to preach, I preached like one time. Uh, and then it was months before I could preach again. And I was so confused. Man, I remember asking myself, God, why are you going to call me to preach and not even allow me to preach? God, I don't understand. Even though God saved me, even though God called me to preach, after that fact, I was still like, God, why are you doing this? I was still confused about the scenario. And that's how we get as Christians. Man, we know God saved us. We see God working in our life. And then maybe a storm comes and it starts rocking our boat or, or whatever the case may be. And we find ourselves questioning God. Like, God, what is going on? God, where are you at? And then even sometimes God will swoop in and try and help us. And we say, God, is that even you? Uh, and I don't know about you guys. Maybe you guys don't do that. But I find myself so many times confused about what is going on. All because I won't just simply break down and say, you know what, God? I fully trust you. God, you say it's you. God, I trust you. Even though they just got done watching Jesus perform this great miracle, it was still confused. I'm going to go on. So number one, we find confusion from the people. Even though they just got done watching him uh, perform a miracle. Number, f number two, we find a cry from Peter in verse number 30. 
And when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and was beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. I guess uh, uh, the Lord gave me this message. And uh, what I was thinking about, man, Peter was, number one, he was already confused about what was going on. But then he kind of, he, he took a step and he said, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you. He took a step out and said, you know what, God, if it's you, God, I'm going to walk on the water. God, I'm coming to you. And once Peter, and that's just like us Christians, man, we take a step and say, oh, God, I'm going to preach. God, I'm going to be faithful. God, God, whatever you want me to do, God, I'm going to serve you. But then we start, we, uh, we begin to be like Peter. We start looking around and saying, you know what? What is all this going around? We begin to look to our left or our right, or we begin to look up and down. We begin to look everywhere except for looking at the one we've got to keep our eyes on. And that is why Peter began to sing. If Peter would have said, you know what? No matter what the storms of life is troubling me, no matter what the chaos is going on, no matter what the other disciples are going to do, I'm going to be the one. I'm going to step back and say, you know what? I'm going to trust God. And if we as Christians would do that, and, and if we would create, we can learn, even though Peter's a great man, even though Peter done all these great things, even Peter failed at one thing, and that was keeping his eyes on Jesus. And that's one thing we can learn, even though, even though we got done watching Jesus before a miracle in our life, even though maybe we get confused, we still got to step out on faith and say, you know what, God, I'm going to walk to you. God, I'm going to walk on the water. God, I'm going to walk through the fire. God, I'm going to walk through the storm, and I'm coming to you. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We've got to stop looking around at our family members. We've got to stop looking around at maybe other churches. We've got to stop looking around everywhere else. And we've got to focus on Jesus. Stop looking around at what's going on in your life because that does not matter. The only thing that matters is whether or not you are focused in on God. And if we would realize, I wonder what would have happened. This makes me think, I do this a lot, but I wonder what would have happened. If instead of Peter looking around at the, uh, at the winds and the rain, if he would have not looked around and he would have stayed looking at Jesus, I wonder what, what, what the end of this, this story would have been. Instead of looking around, that, that makes me think, I wonder what would happen if myself would stop looking around at the scenarios going on around me. I wonder what would happen in my life, how more how, how blessed I could be or, or how much of a difference I can make in this world if I would stop looking at the troubles around me and focus on the one that is in front of me. You got well, uh, uh, us as Christians, man, we, I understand it happens. We're all human, and I'm not saying that it's going to happen. You're going to fail. You're going to get your focus is going to get out of whack. But as Christians, we've got to try our best. We've got to do everything we can do. We've got to shut out this world. And I know right now is the hardest time to do that. With the coronavirus going on, with the riots going on, I know the only, the, one of the only things we think we can do is look around at everything else going on around us. And once you start looking at everything else, I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't see Jesus in all these riots. I don't see Jesus in all this stuff going on in this world. But what I find myself is when I stop focusing on that and I start fo focusing more on my Bible or I start focusing more on church, I start focusing more on my prayer life, I find that all of these things going on outside of my life does not matter no more. And I'm able to walk on the water. I'm able to walk through these trials of life. I'm able to get on my ship. And even though it is rocking and, and rolling everywhere, I'm able to stay focused on God. And we get through those trials of life by staying focused. We find confusion from the people, even though they watched them feed the 5,000. Number two, we find a cry from Peter. we got to stop looking around us and focus on Jesus. Number three, I'm moving quickly. We find a catch from the Prince of Peace. In verse number 31, the Bible says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherewith or wherefore didst thou doubt. You see, what makes me, oh, oh, why this message excites me is the, the fact of knowing that even though Peter was confused, just like you and I get confused sometime in this life, in this Christian life that we live, even though Peter messed up and said, God, I uh, failed, God saved me. Even though we find all of this going on, we still find Jesus reaching forth his hand. Because God, Jesus knew if he would have just stayed focused, everything would have been okay. Jesus knew that it was Peter's fault for what lie he was thinking. Jesus knew that. But even though when we fail, even though we're confused, even though we get our mind off of Jesus, if we would simply get back straight and say, God, save me. God, hear me. God, I want to get back focused. God is going to be there to pick you back up. Amen. Confusion from the people, cry from Peter, catch from the Prince of Peace. There's no way in life that... Maybe you get confused on some things. Maybe uh, you're confused whether or not you should preach or whatever it is. 
be the one that says, you know what, even though this is confusing, even though I don't understand, take that step of faith. And even though you fail, after you take that step, because you see, that does happen. I, I, I could go through many stories, even me as a preacher, I fail. We're human, you're going to mess up. But the best part about that is you have a God that saves you and is not going to let you sink. As long as you get, try your best to stay faithful to God, even when you mess up, just say, God, I failed. God, I messed up. God, save me. God, forgive me. God is going to be there to pick you back up out of the water, set you back on the ship, set you back on dry land. God's not going to let you sink. But we've got to understand, if we, as long, even when you, I'll put it this way, even when you mess up, even when you fail, even when you do all of those things, God's not just going to leave you where you're at. But listen, there's got to come a point in time. I'm not giving you just free reign to go out and sin and go out and be confused. I'm not giving you none of that. There's got to be a time, even when you fail, when you're confused, when you do all these things, there's got to be a time when you come back and say, all right, God, I'm sorry. God, forgive me. God, clean me back up. And that is when God's gonna, God is going to put you back where you need to be. Confusion from the people, a cry from Peter, a catch from the prince of peace. There is, you cannot go so far that God cannot reach you. You cannot, you cannot sink so deep that God's hand cannot stretch forth and pick you back up. You cannot sin too much. You cannot, you cannot go too far. God cannot help you. Confusion from the people, a cry from Peter, catch from the prince of peace. And this is this right here. This really, uh, this is my like I, I told you I was going quick. This is my last point. But we find these saints, and in verse number thirty-three, we find Christ being praised. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. Even when you're confused, even when you cry, after God picks you back up, there was people watching you. There was people that is sitting on their pew or sitting on their boat that is waiting on you to see what happens. You see, it makes me think. I wonder if Peter would have stayed focused on God. I wonder if Peter would not have met, uh, would not have started looking at everything else going on. I wonder if there would have been another disciple that got out of the boat and started walking with Jesus. You see, I, I wonder, that makes me think, I wonder if I stayed faithful. I wonder if I kept my focus on God. I wonder if I would be able to reach more people. I wonder if me as a preacher would uh, would do what I was what I'm supposed to do. Would I, if I preach the sermons I'm supposed to preach, or if I pray the prayer I'm supposed to pray, or if I do everything God wants me to do, and I do it exactly how He wants me to do, and I stay focused. I wonder how many more people I can reach as a Christian. You see, that goes for each and every church member, each and every Christian in general. And I'm not just talking about preaching, but if you stay focused on God, I wonder how many more people. You I wonder how many more how many more people you could get to heaven or you could get to Christ. You see, people was watching Peter. There was people watching to see wh- how this scenario was going to play out. Everyone began to worship. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of truth, thou art the Son of God. I don't know about you, but I would rather be the one that was walking with Jesus instead of way, or being one of the eleven that's going to wait to find out what's going to play out. I would rather take that one step of faith and maybe even mess up and fall down a little bit and let God pick me back up instead of being the 11 that sits in the pew and does absolutely nothing. Be the 11 that sits in the pew and says, you know, I'm going to let everybody else work while I sit and, I be, and I'm able to enjoy everything else. So I, want, I, I, I ask you, I'm almost done. I ask you, are you willing to be the one walking or are you going to stay being the 11 that's just waiting on somebody else? Are you going to wait for God to pick somebody else up? Are you going to wait on God to move for somebody else before you realize that God can do the same for you? You see, if Peter would have not would have not stepped out, I wonder if there even would have been somebody that stepped out that took the step of faith. You see, there may be somebody in your household that is the, that, and maybe there's 12 of you. I'm just using that number because of this. But I wonder if there, if your family is, yeah, I'm trying to think of the right word to use, is, is staying where they're at, waiting on somebody. I wonder if you could be the one that took the step to say, you know what, I'm going to step a little bit closer to Jesus. And I bet you that if you took that one step and said, you know what, 
I'm going to serve Jesus. I'm going to focus on Jesus. I'm going to walk with Jesus. I'm going to trust Jesus. I wonder if the 11 that's going to be behind you is going to be able to do the same thing. You see, I, I think about all. I think about different things whenever I uh, study. And one thing that came to my mind was, it's a whole lot easier for somebody to step out if somebody else has already stepped out. You see, it's easy for somebody to stand and raise their hand whenever there's 12 people around standing, and raising their hand, praising Jesus. But I wonder if you're willing to be the one that says, you know what? No matter if anybody praises Jesus, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to praise God because He is worthy of our praise. Don't be the 11 that just sits and waits on everybody else. Be the one that's going to get up and walk closer with Jesus. Are you willing to be the one? Or are you going to stay in the 11? I want to encourage you. If you were listening, I want to encourage you. Listen, stop being the 11. Stop being the 11. Be the one that's going to step out and do something for God. The way this world is going on right now, we need people that's going to step out. We need the one that's going to step out. Except we don't just need one, we need a lot. But if one person in each household, if one person in each family would say, you know what, I'll be the one, I'll step out, I wonder what could change in our country. This world needs Christians more today than they have ever had to step up and say, you know what, I'm done looking around me, I'm focusing on God, I'm going to keep spreading the gospel, I'm going to keep praising my God, I'm going to keep living the life that God wants me to live. And I wonder if each and every family would find one person. If you would be the one to step out and say, you know what? I'm walking with Jesus. If the other 11 that is waiting around would step out with me. You see, we don't know what would have happened if Peter would have stayed focused. But it makes me think that if he would have stayed focused, would the other 11 ever step out? You see, people is watching your life. Maybe you are the one that has stepped out. Maybe you're doing your best to stay on track with God. You're doing your best to be the one that walks with God and praises God and serves God and does everything God wants you to do. But you find yourself messing up day in and day out. Well, listen, even though you mess up, I've already said, even though you mess up, the God that saved you is going to be the God that's going to pick you back up. Don't stop walking with God because you fail, because it's going to happen. Don't, st don't just give in to doubt and say, you know what, I'm done walking because I've failed too many times. I'm done serving because I've messed up too many times. I'm done singing because I've messed up too many songs. I'm done preaching because I, I mess up every time I preach. Even though you mess up, stay with God. Because listen, I would rather mess up with God than succeed without him. I would rather do everything. I would rather mess up everything as long as I'm with God and I have God on my side than to sit back and be the 11 that never mess up. I would rather be the one that's going to step out and say, God, I'm with you. God, I'm going to serve you. God, I'm going to do everything I've got to do. God, I messed up. God, I failed you. But God, I want to stay on track. God, would you save me? God, would you forgive me? God, would you let me come back? And I bet you if you find yourself being the one that stepped out but you find yourself messed up, you find yourself confused, you find yourself failing, I bet if you got on your knees and said, God, would you help me? God, would you forgive me? God, would you save me? God, I'm dying. God, I'm failing. Every I look all around me, God, every time I preach a message, I feel like I failed. God, every time I sing a song, I feel like I failed. God, every time I come to church, I feel like there's no use in me coming to church. God, would you help me? I bet if you started praying that prayer day in and day out, you just say it one time if you were sincere about it. If God saved your soul, God is going to hear you. God is going to forgive you. God will pick you back up. But there's got to be a time in your life to say, you know what, even though I failed, God, I admit I'm a sinner. God, I admit I failed. God, I admit I'm looking all around me. I'm looking at what's going on outside of these walls. God, I'm looking around what's going outside of everything else. But God, would you help me to stay focused on you? And I bet, I bet if you said that, God would save you. Preacher, how do you know? Because it says it right here. We find Peter confused, but we find him stepping out. We find Peter stepping out, but then we find him failing. But even though he failed, even though he looked around, even though he was focusing on everything else, he came back in and said, Lord, save me. And guess what happened? Prince of peace reached out his hand and picked him back up. Even though he failed, even though you mess up, because you will, you will not be perfect. You will not focus on God for the rest of your life and never sin, never mess up. That's not going to happen. But listen, even though you fail, 
all we've got to do is say, God, I'm sorry. God, would you save me? God, would you forgive me? We find confusion from the people. We find a cry from Peter. We find a catch from the Prince of Peace. And lastly, we find Christ being prayed. There's people watching you. And if you give up, if you throw in the towel, if you quit fighting the fight that you were fighting, I wonder how many people that could have praised God or that did praise God, I wonder how many more there could be. If you kept fighting the fight, if you stayed on track with God, if you did everything you're supposed to do, even when you mess up, you say, God, forgive me, Lord, set me back on the track. I wonder if there's going to be people that's going to watch it and says, you know what? I want what they have. I see them mess up, but then I see them get forgiveness. I see them confused, but they're still trusting God. I, I, I see them looking around saying, what's going on? But yet I still see them stepping towards God. I see them failing when they step, but I see their God reaching down and picking them back up. If we would focus in on God, if we would keep our focus in on God, if we would be the one that's walking instead of the 11 that's waiting, I wonder what type of a difference we can make. Lord, I love you. God, I thank you for this opportunity to preach. God, I, I pray that this message helps somebody. God, I try not to be long, God, but Lord, I pray that just this, this quick little sermon, God, Lord, I pray that it, it would help somebody. God, I pray that we would, I pray that there would be more of the ones instead of, and less of the 11s, God. God, I pray that you help us. In your name I pray. Amen.